Hey everyone and welcome to the May Cave. My name is Megan and today I'm going to do a book review. So first I'd like to thank One World Publications and Library Thing Early Reviewers for giving me an ARC or Advanced Readers copy of this book which is due out February of next year and this book is The Tiger and the Acrobat by Susanna Tomorrow and it's translated by Vicky Satlo and Nico Lugenia Prezavento. Oh, I cannot say that. I am so sorry for that. I'm going to put her name here, both names here, in case I totally butcher that, which I did. Anyway, let's get into the plot about this book. So this book, The Tiger and the Acrobat, it's about a tiger, obviously. She's the main character. Her name is Little Tiger, and it goes through her whole life, from birth, in the den, all the way up until her death. And it's really interesting. She is different than other tigers. She's more curious about things. She's more... Just different. There's something about her besides her curiosity. She just doesn't want to be like a normal tiger, even though she should be a true tiger or a queen, as they're called. They're the queens of the forest. She is. She grows up in eastern Siberia in that region. It's the in the book it says eastern Siberia. In the excuse me, on the back of the book it says eastern Siberia. The mother tiger calls it the taiga. T a i g a. It actually is in eastern Siberia. The tiger is an eco region of the northern part of the world, and I'll put a map up here. So she's from this area, and she's growing up with her mother and her brother, or with her brother, um, being trained by her mom, of course. And she's just been different, and she's curious about things, and when she's told about man, she's curious about man. Instead of the, um, going on her path like she should be, and, you know, growing up and finding a mate and having cubs of her own, she decides to leave and go on this journey. Uh, just she doesn't even really know what she's looking for. She just knows she wants to leave and she wants to do this. She wants to find things out and, you know, worry about life and just think about the philosophical things. This book is very philosophical. And there's a lot of things that happen throughout her life that I can't obviously mention because it would be spoilers. But the main thing that you do know is that she does meet men and she will come to know them, some of them, kind of. Um, and so there were some parts of this book I didn't like, which I obviously I had the, the parts of the book that I can't tell you about. I like the beginning of her childhood growing up and how she's learning things and how she differs from her brother and then how she goes off into the world and then how she does find man because it does kind of allude to the fact that she will find them and, and learn about them a little bit. And then her first part with men or man, I like. And then she goes on to do other things that I don't, I don't really care for that part of the story. I don't know, I personally don't see the point of that part of the story. Maybe there is a point and I just didn't get it. And then that part of her life ends and then she's off to this other part. I'm obviously being a little vague here because I don't want to give it away. And I kind of like the end of the life. So I know I like the beginning and then the middle was kind of okay. And then the end, you know, the end of her life was, I like, I enjoyed that part. But overall, I thought it was a cute book. It was interesting. It was insightful. It was very philosophical. I'll, I'll read you some sections and show you some of the sketches. I do like, there's about a handful of sketches in here that I really enjoyed. And I like Little Tiger as a character. She's very interesting, and it's an interesting life story for her, especially coming from the point of a tiger and not the point of a man or something like that. I will show you the picture first. I think that's supposed to be her. I really like that one. And I'd like to read to you two different parts. So the first one is when her mom wants to tell them about mankind, and her mom is thinking this. Little Tiger and Tiger Cub were now old enough to hunt by themselves and spend the night outside. They often returned with some food for their mother as well. Tiger Cub was a specialist in boars. Little Tiger, however, favored hares. Mother had tried to reproach, reproach, reproach her, asking, Is that all? But her daughter always found an excuse. I wasn't hungry. I ate a salmon. I fell asleep in a clearing full of blueberries. Little Tiger had a curious nature, and curiosity was not a good virtue for a queen. For squirrels, perhaps, but not for a tiger. A tiger should be able to go straight for her goal. Mother sighed. She couldn't keep quiet anymore. She had told them about everything except mankind. Now it was time. So even before the tiger knew about mankind, she was already curious about the world and curious about other things besides hunting, eating, and just surviving, you know? And they talk about things like the mother tells them that they are the queens of the land not only because they are strong and powerful, but because they provide for others. When they kill and take down a really large prey, they don't eat all of it. They eat what they can, and they leave the rest for the scavengers, like the crows or something, to find. And then they feed those people, and it's without without tigers, they wouldn't survive as well, is basically what she's getting at here. And that's why they're queens. Now, the next part I want to show you is when she's with man. I don't think this is a spoiler, but it is interesting, and it kind of alludes to how the whole book is and her conversations with this particular man. And it's, again, it's very philosophical. I can't think of another word right now. 
The tiger had never thought about death, perhaps because she had not seen one of her kin lying lifeless. The only death she knew was the one that she regularly bestowed upon other living creatures. I've never thought about it, she said that night by the fire. The fear of death is a privilege reserved for humans. Why are they afraid? Because they leave behind the known for the unknown. Even the tigers? Even the tigers, of course. But tigers are not afraid. They are not afraid because they are unable to imagine the future. Is that the only reason? No, it is also because they are not forced to choose. Choose what? Between doing good or evil. Humans think we are evil. That's why they kill us. You just act according to your nature. The evil that humans see in you is the evil that thrives in their hearts. What about me, then? What about you? Why can't I live like the other tigers? I cannot live like the other humans, either. And why? Sometimes it just happens like this. Someone is born, and they refuse to walk on the same path that others have trodden. And really, the whole book is kind of like that. You know, she has philosophical questions throughout different stage of her, uh, stages of her life. And I like it. I thought it was very interesting. I don't know if I'd read it again, because, I mean, it was short and it was cute, and I know what it's about, but it's not the kind of plot or kind of questions about the world or whatever that really draws me back to it. But I'll probably keep it. I love the cover, I love the drawings inside, and I do like it. I think I'd probably give it about three and a half stars, not quite a four, but not as low as a three. On Goodreads, you can't do either, so I just gave it a three on Goodreads. But, you know, I'd say go for it, especially if you like philosophical type things, if you're interested in stories from an animal's viewpoint, which you don't have too terribly often, that aren't cutesy and funny, you know? Um, it is really interesting. It's really enjoyable. I do like it a lot. It is um, joyful, I would say. I don't know about profound. This one says joyful and profound, um, but I don't know. Maybe it just didn't touch me the way it was meant to. Maybe the author had a certain um, meaning for this to go through, and it was supposed to be profound, and for me, it just didn't quite make it there. But I read more books for fun, and I don't necessarily read them to have these philosophical thoughts about the world and life and death and that kind of thing, so maybe it just isn't the kind of book that I w uh, is meant for me. I still enjoyed it, though, so even if you don't think this is the kind of book for you, I could still say go for it and try it out when it comes out in February. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe you're lucky enough to get a copy ahead of time. It's not like it's a very long book. It's only 160 pages, even. And, you know, oh, there's the tiger. I forgot. I wanted to show you the, the tiger in there. So that's at the end of every chapter. I'm assuming it's supposed to be Little Tiger. So overall, I think it's a really cute novel. It's very interesting and thoughtful. It has some good parts. It has some okay parts I didn't really care for. I had likes and dislikes, so that's why I gave it a three and a half, because I did like part of it, but not all of it. It wasn't a favorite, but I didn't hate it. I didn't dislike it. So, you know, give it a try if you think. I think at least it should be given a try. And the first part of it is what is probably my favorite part of the whole book, is her growing up and then her first meeting of man. So I give it three and a half stars and I would recommend it actually. So take that as you will, whether you want to read it or not, it's up to you. Let me know down below if you've even heard of this book before. I knew, I know it's still fel relatively new. Um, yeah, just let me know and I'll link a description of good for, you know, for it on Goodreads and I don't know if it's on Amazon yet. Um, I'll link a, just, uh, put a link down for library thing if you guys are interested in that. And I guess that's about it for this review, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.